Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Julia Masaska and this is Made. Today we're going to talk about the five things every successful graphic designer needs to know. If you're new to graphic design or you would like to start your freelance business, then this video is for you. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Number one. Vector graphics. So why is it necessary to know about vector graphics and how to build them? Vector graphics, first of all, are endlessly scalable which gives you multiple advantages. Those advantages are, for example, that you can make a logo file and you can print it any size you want, just as big as you need it. Meaning, when you zoom into a vector file, you'll always see dots that are connected with lines. While, when you zoom into an image file, you will see a bunch of pixels. The industry standard for creating vector files is Adobe Illustrator, and that's also what I'm using. For creating image files, I usually use Photoshop. A vector graphic will always stay sharp, will always stay on point and will never look pixelated because a vector graphic contains vectors. Number two, layout. A layout is a grid system that helps you organize your information in flyers, brochures or books. On these two pages, it's very helpful that the title is on the same level with a lady's head, so you have a very smooth transition from the title to the photo. The reason you look at this is not an accident. The designer determined that you first read the title, then look at the picture and then read the body text. What we see on the following pages is that the text is aligned in the same way as it starts here. That means that the text belongs together. Now on these two pages you'll see a different hierarchy. Because this picture is very dark you will see it first. Then you will read the title and then you will read the body text. And that's what a layout is. It basically gives your eye a flow to follow. For the layout of books, magazines or brochures I use Adobe InDesign. It simply has a bunch of tools that help me design faster and also export my files better for the print. Number 3. Print technology. By print technology I mean the way you handle the file for the final production. Believe it or not, designing a file has also to do with the print technology. You need to make sure you export your files right in order for it to be printed correctly. One of the things you need to consider is working in the right color mode. If you are working on a file that in the end has to be printed, you best work in the CMYK mode. But if you're working on a file that's there to be published digitally, you best work in the RGB mode. Why? Because photos that are shown in RGB are best seen on screens. Files for the print you usually export in CMYK, which stands for cyan, yellow, magenta and black. These colors are used inside the printer to replicate the colors that you see on the screen. The digital print is used mostly to print cost-efficiently magazines, brochures and posters. But the CMYK is not the only way you can export your files for the print. So make sure to communicate with your client which way your file is being printed. One thing you also need to consider while exporting your file is a bleed. A bleed is a margin that leaves a space for trimming. To create a bleed, you simply extend the pictures and the background colors of your file beyond the regular page size. So short, remember, just leave a bleed and export in the right color mode. Number four, prototyping. Now, why do we need to prototype? For example, here, I wanna know what can the viewer read on the first sight so that they don't have to turn the bottle. I also want to make sure that the text is readable from far away. A prototype will give you the overall idea of how the whole product will look like. I mostly prototype when I create packaging or flyers with a complicated folding. I usually notice that the more prototypes I make, the more mistakes I find and the better my end result will be. To create quick prototypes, you can actually just use your house printer. For this purpose, I also bought myself a large format printer, but if you don't have the right equipment, you can also just go to FedEx or to Office Depot. With prototypes, always remember, the more you prototype, the better your end result.
And number five is all about business. Now, one of the key things here is your online presence. Online presence can be also in form of an Instagram page, of a personal website, or you can also create Behance projects that you can link to an Adobe portfolio. Now, I recommend an online portfolio instead of a PDF portfolio. A link is very easy to send to a potential client instead of a big PDF file. Now, as soon as you have something to present, you can attend networking events and you can share your projects and your experience with potential clients. To win trust of potential clients, it's very important to have your legal documents together. It includes invoices, contracts and all the emails that you send over to them. You gotta be official about your contracts and your invoices. For the creation of my contracts and invoices, I use an app called Hello Banzai. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by anybody, I'm just giving my recommendation experience. Now a third and very important part is pricing yourself. In my experience, it's best to communicate your pricing with your colleagues and friends that are working in the same field. Or you can also go to indeed.com and see the salaries of other people. Now there is different factors that influence the way you charge your customer. For example, you wouldn't charge McDonald's the same thing as you charge a local restaurant. So now when I determine the way I charge my client, I'm sending him a price estimate. The price estimate can vary in the long run depending on the hours you work and also the resources that you needed to create something. Now defining your work is a very important part. For example, for me, I determine how many variations a client gets and how many reviews they get so it's all fixed in the contract the way I press my client is I put the hours together that are we working on their project and I send them an official estimate document that they can agree on or refuse I have made the experience though that even though they might disagree at first after some research they come back to you and agree on your proposal so keep the relationship with them nonetheless on a good note saying for example I'm hoping you can find someone that can do the work in your budget but if not feel free to reach back out to me after Afterwards. Just make sure, try to accommodate their needs as much as possible, but never undervalue yourself. Just remember, bad design is more expensive on the long run. I cannot emphasize more on this. Always remember to define your workload in the contract before you start the work. You need to define the amount of revisions and variations of your design. After the contract is signed, I charge 50% upfront and then the design work can start. Alright, that will be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. On this note, I wish you all great success and don't forget, it doesn't matter how small you start, it's all about practice. If you're finding this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to follow me on other channels, check out my about info, there I have linked all my social media channels. If you just followed me on my social media leave a comment below so I make sure to follow you back also in the comments down below you can let me know your favorite design software or any video suggestions that you want to see that way we can build a community and share our experiences as designers thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon bye bye